Hack and Slash Back to School, issue number three. That's right, folks. This book has returned. It took a couple months off, and I get that. Zoe Thorogood is doing pretty much all of the heavy lifting here. It's her art. It is her writing. And that's a lot to do. And this book has a lot of fine detail in it. So take take your break. Come back strong in the new year. And then just leave me happy. And you did. I've talked about this book in the first two issues numerous times. Two issues came out last year. It made my top ten of the year. I really dug everything this book was doing. I loved the first two issues. It had this really cool, just like early school hack and slash vibe mixed with this like self-deprecating, you know, you know, kind of like zillennial panic of like, what do you do with your life and everything's miserable mixed with like internet humor tied up in one of the best looking books out there. Thorogood's artwork is incredible. I have sung the praises of it every single time. I will continue to sing the praises of it because this book looks incredible and is so interesting to read and look at. It's got really unique lettering as well. It works on every conceivable level for me. And this issue does the exact same thing. I am still obsessed with this book. I love that it exists because it's such a specific, like, itch it's scratching, you know? It's really cool. I dig everything we're doing. The end of the last issue, in issue two, they went into, like, a video game and the girls found out there's, like, this evil creature called, like, the mother, like, the biggest slasher monster creature they're ever going to have to fight. She's possessing, like, a little boy. So now they want to find a way to destroy her while still going about their day. So Darla is like, we finally got a little bit of information on her. That can lead us down a rabbit hole to something. You girls did really good. You should take, like, uh, some time for yourself and just rest for the evening before we get going anywhere more serious in this. So it's Boo's 21st birthday. So that means two things can happen. One, Boo is now 21, so we can sexualize her more in this book, and it's not going to be creepy. And two, she can go get us some beer. So Boo, using her new ID because she's a grown-up, buys some beer for the girls. And they just hang out and drink. And she's like to Cassie, do you like girls? She's like, uh, what? And then Boo kisses her, freaks her out a little bit, and it's like, okay, I know what we're doing. I have no complaints about that. It's really fun. I get it because Boo is just this traumatized little creature who just gets obsessively in love with everybody she's around. And, you know, she's killed her ex-boyfriends, so she's just trying to figure out who she is. She's also super drunk and throws up in the toilet literally like seconds later. So they take a selfie Polaroid of the event and it's funny. And then we just talk about Cassie for a little bit and she's like, I wonder why I'm like actually doing what I'm doing here. Is it because I want the world to be a better place or is it because I don't want to be like traumatized by my past anymore and I want to actually come out stronger than what I've always been? Is that like a real reason for me to do these things that I'm doing? Is that selfish? Is any of this truly right for me? I don't really know. I feel kind of trapped doing that. She's like working out in the gym, just kind of like boxing, punching a punching bag. You know how it goes. She runs into Vlad, who has been kind of like on the sidelines of this book. And I get it. I mean, what really are you going to add with him? But he's like, wow, big muscles. You're getting stronger. And he's kind of just around, you know, he's not allowed in the gym. So he's just going to go back to his shed and hang out. And You get it. It's kind of fun. Like, I don't really know what else you would do with Vlad in this story, since it's about, like, these young girls exploring their trauma and, like, growing up in this weird harshness. So, yeah, we then cut to see that Cassie accidentally walks into the wrong room, and this is where she sees Samantha, who's, like, the badass lady. She's, like, a big anime fan. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, of course you are. There's, like, Pokeballs in her room. She's got, like, a Pikachu statue, and she's, like, got, like, a one-piece headband, and she's, like, watching an old thing i don't know if this is like based on like a real anime or not that she's watching it's kind of it like me it looks like samurai jack but i know it's not she's an anime fan it's called demon ninja revenge and cassie's like oh that's cool no it's cool that you like that i was never allowed to watch any of this stuff so samantha's like well that's pretty sad if you wanted to like maybe watch this with me right now it could be kind of fun. So these girls actually bond. Maybe for like the first time they actually connect and bond with each other. And that's nice. So they're sitting down, wrapped up in a blanket, just watching some anime. 
and they realize that the events happening in the anime about like the Trump, the traumatic experience of having to be a fighter and like the self gratification of hurting the people around you, even though you can't justify it. Well, that kind of relates to them and the people in their lives. So Cassie asks like, is this how Boo has always been? Like, is she always been this messed up? But no, it's a defense mechanism. Of course it is. That's the point of this story. Boo is a traumatized girl who lashes out because she's very self-obsessive and she just falls in love really quickly. And when things don't perfectly line up for her, things get very destructive. And when she came here with Darla, she was a different girl. But now she has grown up and she's become this thing, right? Right? That's what we're doing. And it works well. Again, the lettering and the artwork, they're just so incredible and so different. They get a text from Mabel. Hey, we have a mission to go on. Same crew if you're up for it. So they head outside to like get in their taxi and they see Boo is dressed like a little Playboy bunny. And you're like, hey, that's fun. What are we doing? Where are we going for this mission? Oh, we're going to a strip club. <laughs> and the strip club is called Gals for Your Pals. And they're looking for girls because... A bunch of their dancers were mutilated and slaughtered outside of the establishment. And you're like, okay, that's kind of disturbing. So, you know, the samurai schoolgirl outfit for Samantha and Cassie. And we have Boo dressed like a little bunny. They're going to just like sneak inside because the bouncer is just a big stupid guy. And they're like young women who look sexy. So they can just walk inside and they could get the job done. As soon as they enter inside, we get some images that I cannot put on YouTube for you to see because it's pretty ladies in very revealing clothing. Sometimes there's just pretty ladies without any clothing on. And they're like, okay, Samantha's getting a little bit nervous. So how are they going to find a way out of this one to figure out what's really going on here? Luckily, we have a really sexy boo who has big boobies and she can distract the men so they can walk into the back doors and figure out some stuff. So they kind of like slip into the back somewhere. They hear some banging coming from a locker. They open it up and like this w woman's corpse is like mangled and gooey and stretched out to shit. And she's screaming for someone to find her daughter. And it's just really disturbing. Really disturbing and messed up. And she's like, we're all infected down here. He's got us locked up. He's like worked on us and destroyed us. And he says he just needs the final piece for everything to come together. And they're like, final piece, what's the final piece? And then from one of the vents up above in the, the ceiling, out comes a weird spider lady. And it's disturbing. And it catches Samantha and Boo, and Cassie has to like slip away through the vents to get away to figure out what to do in this situation. Because it's like a big human spider hybrid thing. How do you fight that? How do you deal with that? She manages to get like reception back to Mabel, who's like their, you know, their person behind the chair. And she's like, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. This sounds like a really messed up scientist doing some sick experiments. If you could, like, give me, the, like, some information of anything in the lab, maybe I could do, like, some further research if you could find anything. Well, maybe the scientist's name is Dr. Dante Andromeda, and that is a very specific name. And then we, we see Cassie find some more mutilated bodies of women, and, oh, boy, is that graphic. Again... I can't show it here, but it is super impressive. Please look at it if you if you want. Cassie keeps running. She eventually bumps into the daughter because the person they found in the locker was looking for her daughter. They find the daughter. Her name is Maisie. She's like, it's okay. You're going to be all right. And that is when the doctor shows up, this weird guy who has like a bunch of arms growing out of him. And he's just like this mutated freak. And he, it's the classic story of any mad scientist you could think of he was desperate for love and validation he never got it so he made a monster to love him because he wanted to fuck a spider that's what we're doing here it's really it's really weird but it looks so interesting and messed up and you kind of you kind of dig it <laughs> just in like a really sick way it's it's like this is really cool to look at and just disgusting but so perfect for a hack and slash book that I just, I have so much respect and admiration for taking the time to do that. So Cassie finds a sword. She starts slashing at the guy, tearing him apart. And that is when we see that the lady who was trapped in the locker is actually able to like move her body. And she like mutates and connects herself to the spider because the spider creature doesn't actually have like a mind controlling it. It's like a brainless thing. 
used for sex, that she is able to take control of it. So the lady that was in there takes control of the spider, and she starts eating, eating the mad scientist, but she's a monster now, so she can never truly love her daughter. So she's like, you have to take my daughter and go, and don't come, don't come back to see me. So she just leaves. And then they save Boo and Samantha, and they leave the whole situation like, well, this was a lot to experience. And Samantha's like, well, you know what? I mean, I get it. Sometimes like a traumatic thing happens to you when you're young and you go through puberty and suddenly you're just like obsessed with like a specific creature. Like, I want to fuck Sonic. And you're like, uh, what? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so mad scientist wanted to have sex with spider lady, made a spider lady, killed a bunch of strippers. And, um, there you go. Pretty messed up. Pretty messed up, but you know what? It is still kind of fun. So they all head back to the school. They have Maisie with them. So they saved somebody through all that traumatic experience. And they're going to raise another generation of just traumatized girl to live in this world. So that's that's nice, I guess. That's a bonus. That's a pleasant thing to happen. I don't know. It's very telling. That that's what we're doing. But hey, it's really fun and cool. So they managed to save the day a little bit, but suddenly they hear a scream coming from one of the girls' rooms. They head inside, and the mother monster who they are tracking throughout the whole book, she has taken over the body of one of their girls named Kitty, and she has, like, ripped apart her cat and devoured it, and it's disgusting and creepy, meaning that now the creature is in their home, and they're going to have to fight her on their own tour for something. And My goodness. My goodness. Am I having fun? I love this book. I, I've said it numerous times. I will continue to say it. It is so cool to look at. It is so much fun to read. It is so specific in tone and cool. It's This one was like, what if we have like sexy, weird things happening? And it's just like this weird, fucked up sex idea about like a strange guy. That's what they've all pretty much been. But I love it because Thorogood just knows how to make that feel bizarre and strange while still making it like, we're at, we're doing it tongue-in-cheek. Like, Boo knows it's weird for her to be used as a sex symbol and, like, just used for her body, but we're still going to do it anyways because she's okay with it. You know, like, it's it's really specific, but it looks great. It has such a cool flavor, and the way it does lettering and just, like, doing any of the storytelling, it's so s just different, and that's really cool to see. It's a really fun book. I'm so glad it's back. I hope we see another mini series from it. I, I think we got one more issue, but I, I had a great time and I want to see more from it. I would love to see more from this world specifically. I'd love to see more from Zoe doing this because she's just so perfect for this world. So hack slash back to school issue number three. I am going to give a 10 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.